with you today for Fox Lunch. And applause to you for taking the time out of your day to make it a point of supporting the El Paso Museum of Art, El Paso Community Music Hall, and collaborations with the arts in our community. Thank you. Uh, these are indeed interesting times. Last year, we were virtual. And this year, we're trying to do a hybrid box lunch where we can also make it possible for people who can't make it here to see it. We're also working to make sure that this is made available through Susan Hospital to our seniors and our greatest generation through the Alzheimer's Association of West Texas with El Paso Hospice uh, with children who could nor would normally be here enjoying these incredible performances. Uh, again, very, very interesting times. Uh, this weekend, I will let Mr. Bailey talk about it more, but uh, it's not looking like it's an ideal situation at Fox Fine Arts Recital Hall. UTEP is working tirelessly to make everyone safe, as is the city of El Paso. And we must thank the members of the El Paso Museum of Art who have just been working nonstop to make this a reality. <laughs> always have the Chamber Music Festival every January, but the key word this year is postponement, not cancellation. All of the artists who are committed to come to perform for El Paso for Musica and for audiences in the region want to be here more than anything. Nothing, I mean, we're just wearing our coats. This is fabulous if you live in New York or Chicago, I'm, I promise you. But they all are very committed to coming back. They all have families, they all work at universities, they're performing in symphony orchestras, and they are all putting themselves at incredible risk, unfortunately, at this time. So we have to honor their safety. We have to honor your safety, and we'll do everything that we possibly can to make sure that your safety is the number one priority with our music, hopefully being provided to soothe, heal, educate and inspire all of you. With that, I'm going to give it to Mr. Bailey to tell you more about today's incredible performers, where it's UTEP's finest, but really world-class musicians that we're presenting today. And a little more because this weekend, there is also the performance with the El Paso Symphony Orchestra. So Mr. Bailey, if you'll continue. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I am um, very uncomfortable talking to you about this whole situation because um, when, when COVID first happened in 2020, um, I didn't feel anything. I was just numb. Uh, I wasn't even scared. I, I just didn't know what to do except for just to go completely virtual because we had our set schedule that was disrupted. Our set schedule was what we knew and what we, how we did things. As I began to feel again, um, I began to see that that set schedule was not necessary uh, in the future. We could do things differently. And if we do things differently, then we're prepared for the future. Um, what's happening now is actually a good thing in a way to be a hopeful human being is because it's going to make El Paso for Musica and our collaborations year round now. It's not going to be just one focused time of year. The artists that we've invited in are available to us year round. And so the good news is that possibly in the future, possibly even next year, the festival will spread out throughout the entire year. And we'll do it when we can, as we can, and we'll be, we get to celebrate here in the museum year round, not just in January. And also collaborations with the El Paso Symphony as well as at UTEP year round. And so that's a good thing because it never crossed our minds that we would do that because we've always had it in January because of the weather. Um, and that's, that's what, uh, why the festival has always been in January, because musicians from around the world wanted to be in the warmth and beauty of El Paso in January. But we're flexing every single day. We're changing every single day. What Filippo was uh, alluding to is that the numbers keep going up, um, and we have to be very safe. This is chamber music. This is not arena music. 
And so chamber music means we have to be close. We should be close, but we have to be safe. And so um, the most likely we'll be making an announcement very soon. The concerts that are scheduled during this complete rise of numbers will just be rescheduled for a few weeks from now, uh, or a month from now. Uh, a lot of the artists have already even called me and asked if they could come when it's a little bit more settled. So it's, it's obviously we're working together on that, but we'll let you know. The celebration this, this weekend with the symphony is a significant one. It's our 16th collaboration, the Brahms Double Concerto, uh, <clears throat> with Helen Kim, who's in Atlanta, and flew in for this, and myself. It's my 20th anniversary as your artistic director of El Paso Pro Musica. <laughs> it's our wonderful executive director's 10th anniversary as our director. <laughs> It's also our 16th anniversary playing here in the, in, the, uh, in the museum. We've had an amazing run, and we're going to make it even better for you in the future. And obviously, last year, just think about this, last year we didn't do any of this. Now we know how to stream it, as well as have distance seating. Uh, we're doing more, and we're going to be reaching more in the future. Thank you for your continued support. Check out our website for um, and the announcement about Sunday's concert. Uh, the possible concert or the possible rescheduling uh, at Fox Fine Arts um, with Helen Kim, myself, and Dominic Dosha, uh, as well as next week. And again, every day we, have, we get new information and we will share it with you. But the most important thing is we want to keep you safe and we want to keep the, your family safe. We're thinking about others and making sure that we are all still together next year to celebrate again. So, without further ado, thank you, Philippa. Please welcome the wonderful Jim Logan and Dominic Dosa. I'm glad they, they covered everything that we would, would want to say, and I'll leave it there. But I, I'd like to begin with uh, just thanking you all for being here and letting you know it, it truly is uh, an honor for us, for us to be here. Very excited to share this piece with you. Uh, it's a three-movement work, and, and Dom is going to introduce it uh, here, here briefly as well. But just to give you a little bit of, of how this piece came to be, we started talking about this several years ago, and it and it was all ready to go, and we were going to do the world premiere at the uh, International Clarinet Association Convention in Reno in 2020, and that got canceled. And then we were re-invited to pre do the world premiere in Fort Worth at the same clarinet convention, different location, and that went virtual, and there's a lot of issues with recording and sending recordings, so we passed on that. Uh, so we actually did the world premiere of this piece in my recital at UTEP in November, and um, we're thrilled to be, have the opportunity to play it again. We're going to be playing it again at, in Reno, because the clinic convention is back in Reno now. And uh, I, I think you'll really enjoy the work. And if I could just, uh, one random thought, um, not this week, in the following weekend, Saturday night, the 29th, um, we start the UTEP Clarinet Symposium, uh, which is, we're having a guest artist, uh, Chad Burrow, who's a clarinet professor at the University of Michigan, is giving a recital that night. If you all would like to join us, it is free. Uh, at the conclusion of his recital, the UTEP Clarinet Choir is going to be performing the works that they're going to be playing at the TMEA, the Texas Music Educators Association Convention, that's a mouthful, in San Antonio a few weeks later. And then we have a clarinet events all Sunday afternoon and some performances as well. So um, if you'd like to reach out to me after, I can give you some more information about that. And without further ado, then I'll, I'll introduce uh, Dr. Doshi here, and he can talk about the work in specifics. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you, Philippa. Thank you, Zool. Great about this to come here. What a delight it is to share this with you. The title of our program today, today is the title of the piece, Beneath the Painted Skies. And that title itself is very evocative, and it points to the inspiration for this particular work, but also for many of my works, the beauty of nature. Now, people throughout the ages, and probably many of you have taken inspiration from the beauty of nature. And what makes this experience so unique and so special and so poignant 
is that I think it's more so than simply kind of the, what the title implies, sort of the visual elements, it's the sights, it's the sounds, it's the smells, it's the feel of the air to create this holistic experience. And so you have this variety of moods that you experience when you get a chance to be out in the outdoors and to take your time in those settings. And I think it also touches upon as the feelings we experience in the journey of our daily lives. So really, really, this is a holistic experience. And I think if you think about it from a broader perspective, I think it is well summarized by the psalmist. The heavens declare the glory of God. And when we kind of seek out the transcendent and the divine, that is what we really are in a sense of awe and wonder to kind of break beyond ourselves into an experience which just can't be described in words. It's something that we because all of us the seed that's planted in our human hearts. And so it's this ethos that drives a lot of my music and this piece in particular. Now, as Jim mentioned, it's a work in three movements, and what we'll do is say a few words before each movement about what they're about. The first movement is entitled Meditation. So if you think about a meditation, it's a time to think and to contemplate, and the piece begins with this spirit and this feel. And then like the meditation, it slowly unfolds. And thus you can hear the melody, you kind of become a little bit more animated as you go throughout, and then it'll kind of wax and wane, and then flow. In the middle section, it perhaps gets a slightly darker tone, and then there's even a, kind of a bigger ramp up to a very stormy feel at the, in the middle section. And then that will resolve itself to return then to the mood of the opening. And we can think about not only kind of the experience of our lives, sometimes we get this situation, we have a conflict, and it feels like it needs to be resolved, and what a great feeling is it when it is resolved. And then also how this reflects, again, the natural world. Imagine a passing storm, an intense storm on the plains or something like that. So that's what this piece is about. We'll begin then our presentation of Beneath the Painted Skies with Meditation.
So after that calm ending now, we turn to a different theme. And this second movement is entitled The Wild Plains. Again, another title that has kind of a clear evocation. And for myself, the Great Plains have always fascinated me. I'm originally from Minnesota, so whenever I go and take a car trip back home, I, of course, pass through the Great Plains. And I've read a lot of stories about the history of the Great Plains and all that went on there. And just to think about how the people throughout millennia have dealt with this harsh land, how they struggle to survive. And some of the spirit of adventure that comes with this territory have always fascinated me. And I think it's that spirit that you know, finds its way into this piece. So if we think about kind of what are some of these things, we can perhaps mention the stereotypical images of you know, the, the horsemen kind of hunting out, pursuing game in a wild chase. We can think about a fierce windstorm or a thunderstorm or something like that. And these are kind of the type of, kind of adventure deals, kind of cowboys on the plains, perhaps, kind of seeking out the uh, new adventures and new experiences. And so that is kind of the, the mood of, that pervades this entire piece. And it's kind of a series, uh, this feeling of wildness, yet in command, yet being in control, kind of always being a little bit on edge. In the middle part, things to kind of take a little bit of a step back as if someone has you know, you know, taken a break from the adventure and kind of taken in the beauty then of this kind of wide open spaces. We think about the places with the big skies and we think about the painted skies being that inspiration. And some of those series, some of those series that you find in the Great Plains of the skies are really something to behold. So and that's kind of what this piece would fall up against are this kind of on-edge energy with this chance to kind of take a step back from the, the wild plains.
thank you so much. That's quite a barn burner. Perhaps one of these days I'll convince Jim to put on his cowboy hat as we play this. <laughs> it, won't, it won't take much. <laughs> so for the final movement of this work, we'll return into a more kind of reflective contemplative setting. And the, this movement is called quiet grandeur. So we kind of have these kind of more reflective movements, bookending this very vivacious middle movement. And quiet grandeur, we think about grandeur as something big and something that's going to impress us. And sometimes, indeed, that's what it is. But also, I found that in these times of silence, something that's more and more rare in today's world, where we're constantly plugged in to what's going on around us, these moments for silence really give us a chance again to experience again sort of this holistic experience of nature that I talked about at the beginning. If you've ever had a chance to go kind of into the kind of remote areas not far from here, you can hear a pin drop in the air. And that itself inspires this feeling of awe and grandeur. Very much like the first piece, it begins again quietly and then begins to, to just slowly develop and evolve. It's a more continuous melody in the first part. And then in the middle part, it becomes even a little bit more introspective. What you'll hear is just an individual voice coming in, and then kind of variations on this melody kind of coming in together as the other voice continues. And you think about that perhaps as if you've ever taken a walk and a thought comes in your mind, and all of a sudden kind of a parallel thought comes in to complement that idea. And it's kind of the experience of again being out there and having the, the, the opportunity to contemplate what's going on there, the surroundings coming all play. And very much like the first movement, it kind of waxes and wanes in terms of its intensity, moments of quiet, moments of grandeur indeed, but a predominantly quiet tone. And it, it's a rather expansive piece, so I invite you just to just sit back and take it all in and have it paint whatever picture it does for you. The painted skies, not that many specific scenes are what inspired the music, but again, it's general experience. So again, let this music paint for you whatever it does, and we'll conclude then with quiet grandeur.
talk two minutes for you, we thought you might like. You might recognize. Hope you like it. You got it? Oh, you got it. Yeah. All right, here we go. We'll end it on a little bit of lighter, then, right? A little bit lighter. Yeah, so here we go.